Hey, it's me again. It's been a long time uh, since I've done any kind of live video. And to be honest, I know everybody enjoys them and they always ask me to do more. And I would do more, it's just that I literally get so busy doing stuff, I just don't have time to, to do live videos or any videos at all for that matter. So it's been quite a while, but uh, the impetus for this live video was actually, um, the other day I was talking to one of my customers and I, it's difficult to describe to somebody who's not a tuner, um, and even if they are a tuner, how and why you need to use acceleration enrichment in the ECU, and for that matter in, in a carburetor or mechanical injection or anything. So I was trying to get the point across to him and I actually did a little demonstration for him, which I'm going to do for you guys too. Um, and then it kind of clicked in his mind and he said, man, that's really good. You should, you should do a video. So here I am doing a video about it. So anyway, um, obviously I like to start these videos looking at my face so that my buddy Paul Yaw, who's a big bite in the ass, uh, will be annoyed by them. Um, and so I'm keeping in that tradition. I've went ahead and started with my face like normal. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a demonstration for you here about um, what happens to the fuel traveling into the engine uh, down the intake port from wherever its point of, of, of uh, injection is, uh, whether that's with a fuel injector or that's from uh, a carburetor, wherever it, the fuel is mixed with the air. So the idea is that I'll, I'll use this disgusting, dirty hand wash sink and this filthy old crappy sponge to try and illustrate this. So if you can imagine um, what's going on when you have fuel um, leaving from the injector or traveling from its point of uh, mixture with the air into the cylinder uh, is that the, the wetted area between where the fuel and air mix together and where the intake valve is uh, is obviously the intake port and the runner and everything else and that sort of is represented in this in this demonstration by this sponge and if I hold this sponge here um, with a particular amount of water going into the top of the sponge, you can see that I have a nice kind of one-to-one -one transfer of water into the sponge and out of the sponge as long as I don't change uh, anything going on with the sponge. So this would be, you know, an engine sitting, sitting and idling or potentially running at any particular operating condition where everything is stable. Uh, but something interesting happens when you uh, make a quick movement of the throttle or some other kind of transient, you know, changing variable with engine speed or load to the engine. Uh, and if you kind of let the sponge be uh, what would happen with the pressure in the intake manifold, if you can think about it, when we have a high vacuum in the manifold, it would be the same as squeezing the sponge like this. And when we release the pressure, when we open the throttle and increase the manifold pressure, it's the same as releasing the sponge. And, in fact, if you're able to kind of play this game a little bit in the sink like I'm doing, you can kind of see what happens to the fuel flow coming out the bottom of the sponge as you increase manifold pressure or re relax the sponge, you lose the fuel volume going into the engine for a second. Now, why is that? Well, when we increase the pressure in the manifold, the fuel that is staying vaporous and going into the cylinder uh, condenses because the pressure increase uh, allows the fuel to condense into bigger droplets on the walls of the intake manifold and the runner and so for an instant that amount of fuel doesn't make it into the cylinder. What we're really doing is filling up a puddle that exists on every engine all over the intake tract. Now if it's got port fuel injectors on it then the injectors are right down by the intake valve and that puddle exists between the injector and the valve and that volume is smaller than say if we had a carburetor or an injector mounted up at the top of the intake manifold and the air fuel mixture had to travel all the way down to the valve. But the idea is the same and the concept's the same and that's that if we qu quickly open the throttle and raise the intake manifold pressure it's the same as me releasing the sponge and for an instant the puddle dries up and no longer transfers fuel through it into the cylinder. And the opposite happens when we close the throttle. If we then have the puddle uh, sustained again, the sponge filled back up with water, and we close the throttle and decrease the manifold pressure, it's the equivalent of me squeezing the sponge, 
where we get additional fuel volume going into the engine because it evaporates everything that's in the puddle. And then when it comes back towards an idle and the manifold pressure comes back to normal, you get another period of dead time while it replenishes the sponge with liquid. The sponge now being the wetted area in the intake manifold or in the runner. So there's a puddle that has to be maintained between the injection point and the cylinder. And when you move the, the manifold pressure, the throttle, quickly up or down, the volume in that puddle changes and you have to replenish what's, what, what gets sent through the engine. If you decrease the manifold pressure like this, it takes a certain amount of time to replenish it before it's sending fuel back through it one to one again. And as you increase throttle, it takes a certain amount of time to replenish that puddle. And again, that's what the acceleration enrichment or transient fueling and or fuel film in some uh, engine management systems is, is meant to do. It's meant to cover up that delay. So, you know, this isn't nearly a technical video on, you know, how acceleration, how to calculate how much acceleration enrichment you need or how to calculate how much decay or how a particular piece of software works. This is just a generic uh, and relatively easy to grasp concept of what's going on with the fuel going into the engine from the point of introduction into the airstream. So I used this with one of my customers the other day and it made the light bulb click on for him. And so hopefully for anybody who uh, is curious about that concept or struggles putting that that part together this will will help you and it's simple enough to do you know by yourself at home grab a sponge grab the water uh, and watch what happens as you squeeze it keeping in mind that when you squeeze the sponge that's the same thing as decreasing the manifold pressure right when you decrease the manifold pressure it's the same as squeezing the sprunt the sponge the pressure drop vaporizes more of the puddle more of the puddle goes into the cylinder and therefore then must be replaced before we have that one-to-one -one transfer of fuel from the injection point into the puddle and out of the puddle into the cylinder. And that puddle and or fuel film, um, as it's sometimes called, is, is what it's all about. And the sponge does a really good job of being an analog for what that puddle means. And you can play with the flow rate on the, on the faucet to simulate high and low speed. Because if you've tuned in any engines and you've noticed maybe that it doesn't take as much acceleration enrichment at higher speed, it's the same deal. If you turn the sink up high enough, it's able to replace that puddle fast enough that it doesn't take as much time to get it back full again. So this sort of explains, you know, the shape of your, of your acceleration enrichment curve by engine speed. Um, so again, you know, I don't have my pocket protector, so I'm sure that'll piss Paul off because he likes to fucking have pocket protectors and calculators and graphs and fucking charts. So I'm just doing it kind of the old-fashioned way with a sponge. And hopefully I've got the point across. And if I didn't, that's okay because I'm not, I'm not a teacher. And it's been a long time since I did a live video. So there's your live video. And again, my buddy told me, hey, you should really do that because that made, made it really click the light bulb on for me. So I'm, I'm help if it didn't help anybody at him, then I'm in good shape because at least I don't have to answer that question 575,000 more times from him. So anyway, I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. If you like it, share, and uh, when I get a chance, I'll try to come back with something interesting for everyone. Appreciate you all. Bye-bye.